I'm Jonathan Ward from TLC. When it came down to the aesthetics, there were two design principles that were really important to me. First off, I didn't want the vehicle to be something that looked like it was built from all the traditional automotive catalogs where you go, oh, there's that product from that and that product from that. I really wanted it, the sensitivity of the vehicle to be about the design encompassing all of the parts. So steering wheel, we had to look long and hard to find a truly industrial grade 16 inch steering wheel and it turned out our friends at Cat Diesel. So this is from one of the larger Cat Diesel units. The steering column was another issue. Ergonomics of the original trucks were really limiting. So we wanted to have a tilt column to allow for taller and shorter drivers and more comfort. Also for safety, the original rigid columns are the last thing you want to be embracing in an accident. So these tilt columns have a collapsible shaft in their design, which has been a real safety enhancement. Other details like these vents on the dash, these vents are sourced from Cessna because the automotive ones that we found were just kind of plasticky and didn't have the industrial quality that we wanted. So up here we hit a little light. There's a LED buried under this stainless Allen head fitting that projects 140 degree range of light so that you have better view of your instruments at night. A lot of people get confused, it's so simple. Lights, wipers, fan, hot, vent, and cold is all you need. We did a 12 volt marine power port in dash. There's another one in the back of the truck. It's not a big deal, but it matters to us. Four wheel drive vehicles, radio, antennas. Your antenna dies the first day on the trail. So we've hidden our antennas, both for our satellite XM feed as well as our FM feed, right up here at the top of the windshield frame. So we're using a power assisted FM antenna and our XM or Sirius antennas are hidden so the vehicle never has to deal with the issues of broken antennas, which I'm tired of replacing them in my old FJ40. Now, when it came to options and accessories, Everyone wants a good stereo. Some people want navigation. I'm a big fan of seat heat for early morning surf sessions. So we use a Tuffy center console that's a legal locking gun safe. And it has this neat front compartment where we can hide our audio system. We also hide the controllers for the seat heat in here. The main body of the console holds the iPod interface. And then we have an amp and bass option also for guys that really want to thump the stereo a bit more. So this truck is equipped with the amp and bass package, wherein instead of a articulating seat mount for the driver's seat, we have a fixed mount that runs a JBL 12 inch bass, and then we hide the amplifier in the rear. These switches right underneath the dash are one of our option packages for the ARB locking differential system. So what you would do is you would simply flick the first switch to engage the ARB compressor, and then you have separate switches for both the front and rear locking differentials. For those of you that don't know, four-wheel drive vehicles, all you're really getting is power to one wheel in the rear axle and one in the front. So if you lose traction to that one driving wheel, four-wheel drive or not, you're not going anywhere. So we work with ARB because you don't know it's there unless you need it. So around town, your road manners are just like any other vehicle. But when you need to be locked, you simply engage the compressor, flip the switches to lock the differentials, and you're ready for action. When you're done on the trail, simply disengage them on the fly or at a stop, and you're back on the highway, no problem. Our transfer case design is kind of unique in that we have a dual stick control of our Atlas II transfer case, which means we can now control the front and rear axles independent of one another. So for example, you're stuck in a mud bog. You're not getting any traction at all in the rear. Forget about it. Your locker is on, but it's just swamp water and you're just spinning. Well, instead of losing the control and losing that power, you can now put the rear in neutral, power just the front axle, engage the locker, 87 to 1 crawl ratio, pull the vehicle out basically in front wheel drive with power to both front wheels. So the original kick vent in the cowl, that was factory AC back in the 60s. These are vintage mirrors that we take apart, replace all the hardware with stainless and powder coat them, but we love the classic aesthetic of them. Door latches, commercial industrial truck latch, 
nice and strong. So a couple more examples of limitations of the original trucks that we were really keen to address with the Icon design. For one thing, the passenger seat, Land Cruisers, it was fixed. It had no recline, it had no floor track, and it had the gas tank right under the seat inside the cabin. Never seemed like a great idea. So when we got into CAD and were able to redesign our whole floor pan, that was a key design trait that we wanted to address. The other issue was, how do you get into the back seat? The original trucks had side-facing jump seats, which are a safety disaster. So I really wanted to design an H-bar that allowed three-point safety harnesses for everybody, and we wanted to address the ingress and egress for the back seat. So, because of the flat floor, this seat now tucks and tumbles forward and gives you really good entry into the rear. So it's still a pretty small vehicle, and we wanted storage, more storage, and storage. So anywhere we could use the space that we had, we did. So we made the tailgate so it has this cool flip-up locking compartment in the back, which is a great place to put our toolkit, your off-road recovery gear, your winch controllers, and no one ever knows it's there. It's totally invisible, which is kind of cool. The back seat actuates quite simply. All you do is grab it and tuck it and bring it forward. And then there's two clips on the bottom. You can pull it out, leave it at the house if you need more room. We've also had a couple clients who didn't want a rear seat at all. And what was more important to them was the utility of the cargo space. So like one guy likes to shoot ducks. So we deleted the rear seat and made a tracking system so that he can put in his cages for his dogs. Another guy's an avid photographer, so we did an exoskeleton, roof rack with a ladder, and power inverters, and hidden drawer system for all his gear. So since the icons are really hand-built by a team of six of us here in Los Angeles, we really like to add those specific utilities to match a client's taste and needs. It's part of the fun.